And we welcome you into the Unrivaled Weekly Preview Show as Penn State gets set to visit Indiana this weekend. The 16th ranked Nittany Lions taking on the Indiana Hoosiers in Bloomington at Memorial Stadium. Brian Tripp thrilled to be with you here on this Wednesday night from the Lash Building. A chilly night outside, but pretty nice night here in State College. Head coach James Franklin will be addressing the media in just a moment. Let's take a look at that matchup. Penn State and Indiana at 3.30 on Saturday, and you can watch that game on ABC. But head coach James Franklin about to address the media right now here on this Wednesday for his weekly media, media availability, and we will hear from the head coach in just a moment. But Penn State at Indiana is the 26th all-time meeting between the two teams. Penn State leads the series 23-2 to and shut out the Hoosiers 24-0 last season. Sean Clifford with three touchdown passes. Here's head coach James Franklin. Did you end up having a conversation? And if you did, is there anything uh, you'd be comfortable sharing? No. No, I don't have anything I'd be comfortable sharing. James, is there anything you can uh, update us on with respect to Landon and his available, uh, his availability uh, for the rest of the season? And can you comment on the job that Hunter's done, kind of stepping in there and, and filling in? Yeah, I don't have anything specifically on Landon yet. To to your point, I think you know you you have a pretty good idea how I handle things. Yep. If they're season ending, I'll usually express that to you. Um, but I don't have anything new on that. Uh, but Hunter's done done a nice job. Uh, he really has. He's uh, uh, doing extremely well, kind of getting you know within the team from a cultural perspective. The coaches love him, the players love him. Uh, he's actually getting his MBA right now, so he's doing great there, and he's and he's really playing well. Um, so we've been pleased with him. You know, he's been a he's been a huge pickup for us for really a lot of different perspectives. Been a really good been a really good addition. Yeah. Similar to Mark's question, do you have any further update for Olu with regards to season-ending injury in that front for him? No. James, you mentioned on Tuesday that the practice will decide who starts a quarterback this week. What have you seen from Sean Drew this week, and have you made a decision on starting him? Yeah, I mean, I, obviously, there's, there's nothing to really report in terms of, of changes. You know, you guys hadn't really asked me this the whole rest of the season. Um, so, obviously, if there's any type of change, I probably still wouldn't announce it until after the game, obviously, because the, the media is watching, every, excuse me, the other team is watching everything we discuss, but um, I don't have any announcements to be made. James, in terms of tackle depth, uh, is Drew Shelton in a spot where he can be, you feel like you can trust him in a, in a Big Ten setting for an extended stretch if you needed to? Yeah, he, he's a guy, you know, there's there's been talk for a long time about five years of eligibility, and he's a guy that, you know, if we weren't trying to save his red shirt, would have played a bunch already this year. Uh, he's done a really good job, is super smart, prepares extremely well. Um, he's gotten bigger and stronger. He's, he's right around 300 pounds now. Um, so he's done a nice job. So, you know, obviously there's a lot of moving parts that I know you guys are asking about. Uh, we'll see how that will factor in with him come Saturday. The last few weeks, the play calling has seemed, you know, a little more aggressive than maybe. I, I didn't hear that. I'm sorry. The last couple weeks, play calling, especially on offense, has seemed a little more aggressive than maybe compared to the early half of the year. Has there been a change in, you know, some of the planning or behind the scenes, some people's voices who maybe are stepping up in that sense, or have roles been adjusted? No, no, no really, no changes. Um, I, I, I don't necessarily. Um, see it that way i can understand probably why you're asking it but it really we haven't really planned differently we've executed better as the season has gone on but um i don't necessarily feel like we have you know necessarily uh, approached things differently if that if that's what you're asking i think we've executed better and better as the season has gone on um so that that's played a part in it on that note um on the execution side, how has Sean changed in terms of throwing the ball up to guys that maybe aren't wide open and giving guys like Parker Washington the opportunity to come down with a contested catch? Yeah, I, I don't really necessarily um, see a change in that in practice and in and in games. Um, you know, we've made some more plays, we've made some more contested catches. We we had some drops early on. I, I've mentioned to you guys, I think the last couple of weeks. I mean, obviously. Uh, we can all pick out the things that we got to improve on in terms of the mistakes and things that we need to eliminate. But I do think the last two games, Sean's also made some big time plays. Um, you know, I, I think we talked about a couple of the throws in, in the previous game, not this past one, the one before. 
Uh, but he's made some big time, big time throws, so that's part of it as well. In the event Olu doesn't go this weekend, does Bryce Eftner slot over that left tackle spot? Is there a different plan? How comfortable are you with that? Yeah, again, and and I know we got you know different media that have, that have showed up. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking now about things that I would want to get from from Indiana. Um, you know, so I, I, I guess I understand you guys got to ask the questions. But Bryce Eftner has played all year long. Uh, we we expect him to have a bigger role. Obviously, we got some bumps and bruises across the offensive line. Um, so he's played a, a significant role all year long, and, and he'll play more uh, probably this week. James, you moved uh, Day Day to kick return a couple games ago. What went into that decision? Yeah, just just more than anything, um, you know, we had we had a couple injuries. Uh, at the running back position, so just felt like you know, give give Day Day an opportunity there. He's really been doing it as a guy in practice uh, for the last two years, so give him an opportunity. You know, especially when um, you know, we hadn't. I think I'd mentioned to you guys we hadn't had Kevon for a couple of weeks, so that that played a factor in that. Parker has last game was a career game. The game before played pretty solid as well. Compared to the early half of the season, he seemed to be you know a bit of a mid late season breakout. Has anything changed for him in terms of the offense, or has it just been a progression of getting more comfortable as the years gone on? With Parker? Yeah. Yeah, no, n nothing, nothing's changed. There's going to be some games where, based on how they play coverage or how Sean goes through his progression, where the ball goes to certain guys. Obviously, we always game plan trying to you know, put Parker in position to make plays, but obviously the defense knows that as well. So if he's not open, we're not just going to force it to him. We're going to move on kind of throughout the progression. So there's going to be some weeks where the tight ends catch 12 balls for 150 yards and three touchdowns. There's going to be other games where it's the slot or it's the X or it's the Z or it's the running game. It just really depends on, on how things play out. James, uh, the past two games we've seen Jerry Cross in, in pads and warm-ups before the games. Um, obviously, we haven't seen him out here during our periods, but just behind the scenes, how have you seen him come along as a pre during his, his freshman season? And his yeah, season? I'm a big fan of Jerry. He got hurt in the summer, um, so it had missed it, had missed a bunch of time, but he's getting close to being back full go. Um, he's He's been awesome, though. He's got a huge smile on his face. He's worked extremely hard. He's changed his body. Um, our training staff loves him. The strength staff loves him. Um, him and Zane Durant are like inseparable. I never see one without the other. Um, he's doing really well. Um, so you know, he'll be a guy that hopefully towards the end of the season will have an opportunity to, to get some work and get some reps. We'll, we'll just see how that plays out. Aside from tempo, or aside from fatigue and then substitution problems, getting the sub packages, what does tempo do to a defense um, that teams want to use it or, or stay away from it if you're the defense? Yeah, I think in, in theory what they're trying to do, it, it, people have gotten better at defending it, but you know, in, in theory, especially early on, you know, it would simplify people. You, know, you wouldn't get the exotic blitz or the exotic coverage because people were more concerned, almost like in, in you know, two-minute defense, where you just you want to make a solid call and have your guys out execute it, um, you know, at a higher rate than than their offense is. Um, you don't want to call something exotic and somebody doesn't get the call and you blow a coverage and give up a huge play. So that's what they're really trying to get you to do. They're trying to get ge generic, you know, vanilla looks. Um, and then the other thing is they're trying to tire you out. They're trying to be able to run from sideline to sideline because usually when you're using tempo, not only using tempo from a speed pace, but you're also trying a lot of bubble screens and things like that to try to get you to run from sideline to sideline. So now you take maybe a really good defensive end, they can't sub them out, and those guys are stuck on the field, and now they're not the same type of players that they, that they typically are. So. Um, you know that's that's the theory behind it. I also think the people like we saw last week and like what we try to do, where you change the tempo up because if if you go fast all the time, that's hard. But if you do anything all the time, you can get adjusted and used to that. Where if you can go fast and then go slow and then go fast and get an idea of what defense they're playing, look back to the sideline, try to get the perfect call for that defense, those types of things. Uh, there's value in the diversity of the of the uh, of the tempos as well.
James, when you decide to make a change to the starting lineup, what is that timeline like during the week, and how do you communicate that to the players directly involved and then to the rest of your team? Yeah, so, um, you know, typically we don't make announcements to the team, um, but it's it's during the week. I mean, sometimes obviously it could happen on game day and things like that, but it's typically during the week. Uh, we'll start to, you know, make some adjustments as the week goes on during practice, depending on how it plays out. And then we have a discussion as a staff and the coaches have a discussion uh, during the week on what is the rotation going to be on Saturday. And unless it's unless it's something dramatic, a big change, then we, we don't really talk about it till Saturday morning. But if but if there's something significant going to happen, then then we'll have a discussion, you know, probably Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday night, Thursday afternoon. We saw Jimmy Crisp late in the game uh, last week. What can you tell us about his development over the last couple of years? Yeah, he's just been an awesome program guy. He's uh, you know, done everything right academically and athletically. He's worked his tail off. He's very popular, very well liked. So it was really good to see him to be able to get in the game and, and, um, and make the most of it. Um, you know, obviously, you, you don't you don't want guys to get hurt for people's opportunities to come. But um, you know, Jimmy's a guy that's done everything right since he's been here. So it's good to see guys like that get in the game for whatever reason and then have some success and be able to build on that. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. That's head coach James Franklin with his weekly Wednesday media availability here from the Lash Building. Outside on this November the 2nd, hard to believe Brian Tripp here for the Unrivaled Weekly Preview Show and joined by a state college guy, Keaton Ellis. I can't ever remember a November quite like this in state college so far. Pretty crazy that you're outside practicing tonight. Yeah, you know, we're taking advantage of it. You know, kind of lucky. You know, it's great weather, so you got to take advantage of that for sure. You're a part of a secondary that has 60 pass breakups on this season. Why do you really like the group you have back there? Yeah, we got a lot of versatile players, you know. Everybody uh, has really stepped into each and each and everyone's roles, uh, whether that's third down or, you know, base. And, uh, you know, we just really been attacking the ball and we just hold a high standard for everybody, you know, you know, in the room, the safeties and the corners. Uh, and, you know, we, we expect it of ourselves and everybody gets held to that standard and, you know, we're able to make plays. How would you describe the fight and battle that your team's had all year long? Yeah, you know, it's a lot of ups and downs, and that's going to become with every season. You know, it's just how you handle them. Um, and I feel like as a team and our leadership, we've done a great job uh, of staying consistent each week in practice uh, throughout the week, you know, and prep for each game. So I think, you know, we've done a good job with that. A couple of areas I've really been impressed with the last few weeks on your defense and probably all year long, particularly the sudden change plays. What's the mentality have to be when you're out there and your defense has to hop on the field and rally around the football and make a big play to help out your offense? Yeah, and those, those are critical points in the game. Um, and, you know, just have a, the mentality that you're going to make a play, a quick stop, or, you know, create a turnover. Uh, you know, that's the mentality that we, you know, we go out, you know, on the field uh, on almost every drive. But, yep. you know, it's, it's that much more, you know, impactful and sudden change to be able to flip that momentum back to our side. Ohio State had been perfect in the red zone going into last weekend. Your defense came up with some big stops, not only limiting them to no points at the end of the first half, but holding teams like Ohio State, like Michigan, to field goal tries, which is yeah. so crucial in today's college game. As the field gets tighter, what are the things that you emphasize as a defense? Yeah, man, you got to get on, get on guys. You know, you can't can't leave anybody open. You know, then the ball's gonna come out quick. So uh, we got to protect. You know, what they what we know they're gonna throw, uh, and we protect those those throws and uh, stop the run down there. You know, you're gonna it's a good equation for uh, having success. And yeah, we've the, shown it. The other area, Keaton, that I want to talk about is third downs because your defense has been able to get off the field consistently on third down. What is the approach on a third down for your defense to make sure you're getting off the field? Yeah, you know, those, those are the uh, downs that win the game. You know, third down uh, you know, wins you football games. So if you're able to you know, get off the field uh, and, you know, force force a punt uh, or, or whatnot, you know, it's, it's huge for, for both the defense and the offense getting the ball back. How would you describe the dynamic? There's so many personalities in that secondary. How would you describe the dynamic in that room every single day? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a funny group. You know, we got a lot of characters. Uh, guys like to crack jokes. Uh, but, you know, when it's time to get serious, we get serious. And uh, we all have, you know, that right mentality where we can, you know, enjoy We enjoy our time together. Uh, you know, we, we spend every day with each other. So, you know, you build that bond and that makes you even closer and, and it helps you perform on the field together. I know there's a lot of guys, including yourself, that have taken on leadership roles from the defensive backfield. But what has Jair's leadership meant to the entire defense and the entire team? Yeah, you know, he's huge. You know, he's uh, always, you know, come with a positive attitude, uh, you know, keep, keep, keeping everybody's energy up. And, you know, that's that's huge. And, uh, 
you know, bringing that swag to the defense and everybody feeds off that. And, you know, and, you know defense, offense, so everybody feeds off that. And he's super vocal, which is which is huge. Uh, and so not only does he lead by example, but he's also being uh, really vocal, which is, which is a uh, great thing. We started this by talking about being a state college kid. You've always wanted to come to Penn State. Your dad's a Penn State football letterman. What's his feedback like after a game to you? Is he just a regular dad after a game or is he a former Penn State football player? Yeah, you know, he always, you know, has his two cents about, you know, what, what I uh, could have done better. And, you know, if he if he saw like the key he knows out there, if he didn't, you know, he always that's one of his main things. Uh, but he's he's always, uh, you know, hard on me, but it's constructive. Um, but he's also my biggest supporter and, you know, everything he do, he supports me and I love him for that. I know you love the support that the local community has for you, but how about the environments the last two weeks at Beaver Stadium? I mean, that's something you've always dreamed about playing in front of. How would you describe playing in that stadium, in the whiteout, and then the stripe out the crowd, I think was unbelievable last weekend? Yeah, and, you know, last weekend, you know, for a 12 noon game, you know, that was that was really amazing. Uh, you know, we really you know appreciate the support. And just growing up, coming to the games, you know, it's, it's really a, a blessing and an honor to be able to play out in front of, you know, of all the fans that, that really do support us. And, you know, they, they were getting loud, too, and, and it's awesome. You feed off that. When you went to class this week, were there some hoarse voices in class on Monday and Tuesday? <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear any, but I'm sure there was a lot of... Uh, uh, cough drops and that, those kind of things. Uh, you can say Halls, they're an halls, official yeah. sponsor. <laughs> right. <laughs> Did you ever have a hoarse voice after going to a game growing up? Yeah, uh, actually, I had a good. I was. I had good uh, vocals, so okay. uh, I was loud, but <laughs> I, I never lost my voice. Well, communication is important in the secondary, yeah, so it's a good right. thing you have those good vocals. Keaton, really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Good luck this Thank week. You. Keaton appreciate Ellis it. with us here on the Unrivaled Weekly Preview Show. Penn State getting set to take on Indiana. It's the Nittany Lions and Hoosiers at 3:30 on AB. That's coming up on Saturday from Memorial Stadium in Bloomington, Penn State at Indiana. It's the 26th all-time meeting between the Nittany Lions and Hoosiers. Penn State leads the all-time series 23-2 and shut out the Hoosiers 24-0 last season. Sean Clifford with three touchdown passes in that game. Indiana coming off a bye week. They've lost five in a row, three and five overall on the season. Now we're joined by offensive tackle Bryce Efner. We're just going to step back a little bit to make sure we don't get your head cut off the screen here, Bryce, after being joined by Keaton Ellis moments ago. Bryce, I know this team has really battled all season. How do you feel like the team has responded in practice this week? Because I know the tone is really set by the leadership on this team. Uh, I think we've really responded well. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the only thing you do is bounce back as strong as you can. And that's kind of been the focus. Uh, forget about it. Move on. Want to know. Uh, that's the mentality. And uh, I think we really stuck to that this week. Well, you guys really had a good game moving the football on the ground and through the air. How important has the balance been to your offense all season? Uh, I mean, it's been incredibly, uh, incredibly important. Uh, I know in past years our run game hasn't been uh, as good as it has been, and that's been a uh, problem for us. But I think uh, with the run threat that we have this year, uh, it opens more opportunities for you know the pass game. And then when the pass game picks up, we can run the ball because they don't have that much film on it. So it's a really good balance. We're looking at some of the rushing highlights right here, blocking for Nicholas Singleton, Katron Allen, and Key Von Lee. That's a fun group to block for up front, I'd imagine. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm smiling just watching these. These are awesome. What makes those backs really good back there? I mean, they're just so quick. I mean, like you blink and they're another 20 yards ahead of you. So uh, I, they can just get down the field as fast as possible. And uh, you just try and catch up. As you can see in some of these clips, we're uh, chasing after them, going about five miles an hour. It's better be the offense than the defense chasing after those Absolutely. guys. Absolutely. Correct. You are correct. How has your game grown throughout the course of the season? What do you feel like you've brought to the table as you continue to earn more and more reps? Um, I think my game mostly has improved uh, in my pass protection. I've really tried to work uh, just where my hands are in my sets, working my independent hands, trying not to lean, uh, trying to stay more in control of my body when I'm in my pass sets so I'm not all over the place. Uh, I think my run game has been pretty good overall. Uh, I come off the ball fast, I come off the ball hard. Uh, I think really just, I think my pass game needs to be my room of improvement right now. I was reading your bio, and I know a little bit about you, but off-roading, grilling, and <laughs> hunting were the three hobbies you have listed. Yeah, those are, that's old, but they still, they're still legit, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What, what's your favorite thing to do when you're away from the football field? Um, that's a two-parter. So uh, when I'm away from the football field, like just got done with it, uh -huh. I'm tired. Like, I don't really want to do anything. So my favorite thing to do 
is like order a pizza or like get some ice cream and then you know watch like Game of Thrones or something like that. Are you a cheese pepperoni or do you load pepperoni. that pizza up? Pepperoni. My mom just sent me like eight deep dish pizzas from Chicago. That's I'm nice. from Illinois if people don't know that. Uh, Lou Malnati's deep dish. They deliver frozen pizzas. I think I ate six of them in a matter of like 48 hours. It was ridiculous. <laughs> Probably like 8,000 calories, but completely worth it. So you're a deep dish guy. And you can't get any good deep dish outside of Chicago, right? You can't, no. And you can't get deep dish that's good other than Lumel Nati's, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. If you aren't getting Lumel Nati's, you're not getting the right deep dish. That's Maybe. a hot take for some people, but. Well, I'm a big deep dish guy. We don't get a chance to go to Chicago and Northwestern all that often, but I also like deep dish. Have you ever had the Detroit style? It's the square, but it's kind of like deep dish. What about the thin The fact New that York? you just said kind of like deep dish tells me it's not deep dish. <laughs> what about the New York thin crust? Oh, that's great, but it's, it's, not, it's deep not deep dish. I'm an, old, I'm an offensive lineman. I need some calories. <laughs> I need something with some heft to it. And the thinly sliced New York slices aren't going to do it for me. <laughs> Bryce, we'll let you get on out of here. Thanks All so right. much. Really yeah. appreciate it. Great pizza reviews. Thank by you. The way. Thank you. Thank Bryce you. Bryce Effner, Penn State offensive lineman, joining us. Nittany Lions and Indiana Hoosiers coming up this weekend on Saturday at Memorial Stadium in Bloomington at 3:30 on ABC. Let's take a look at some of the key players for the matchup this week and for the Penn State offense. We start with Parker Washington, a career high 179 yards on 11 catches against Ohio State, a 58-yard touchdown plus catches of 26 and 27 yards, explosive in the passing game. He has a team-high 41 catches this year for 567 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Catron Allen, 12 carries, 76 yards, and a touchdown against Ohio State. Catron Allen and Nicholas Singleton running behind guys like Bryce Effner blocking 1,078 yards combined on the season. Allen, five touchdowns rushing, and now on the Penn State defensive side, trying to slow down Indiana's rushing game, which has struggled to get on track all year. That linebacker tandem of Abdul Carter and Curtis Jacobs has been so good. Here's Abdul Carter making plays the freshman. 35 tackles, four and a half of those for a loss, and two and a half sacks this season. So who to watch for? Indiana running back Josh Han Henderson has found the end zone quite a bit this year. Six total touchdowns, three of those on the ground, three receiving touchdowns as well. He's a transfer from North Carolina. Indiana with 16 transfers that have played this year. Aaron Casey at linebacker has stepped up. This is a team that's also been beat up because of injuries. One of the questions, will Cam Jones come back this week? But Casey's their leading tackler. And then they had a bye last week, but in their previous game against Rutgers, Jalen Lucas had a 93-yard kickoff return touchdown to start the game, and he was also involved in that game offensively with nine touches for 66 yards, a couple of the key players to identify for Indiana going into the matchup on Saturday. So as we said, Penn State at Indiana coming up on Saturday. We take a look at that Penn State football schedule. Nittany Lions with four games to go. Even though it doesn't feel like November, we flip that calendar over. At Indiana, big home game fans will need you back here at Beaver Stadium. That raucous atmosphere we've had the last two weekends on November 12th against Maryland. Then Penn State at Rutgers back at home to take on Michigan State to end the year, the Penn State football schedule. And our game week schedule, even though we're on the road, you can still follow the Nittany Lions. We, of course, have our unrivaled weekly preview show here tonight. Tomorrow night, it's the Penn State Coaches Show featuring James Franklin on the Penn State Sports Network at the Field Burger and Tap. And then on Saturday, we'll be with you with the Tailgate Radio Show beginning at 2 o'clock, 3.30 kickoff, right after the game, the unrivaled postgame show and the Penn State Sports Network postgame show. So that is what is on tap this week for the Penn State football team. Whether our players are at home or on the road in most cases, you can follow our team and see them sit on our DeWalt benches. Thank you, DeWalt, for being the proud bench partner of Penn State Athletics and for keeping our players game ready while on the sideline. And man, last week on the sideline, it was electrifying at Beaver Stadium. But thank you, DeWalt, for your partnership with Penn State Athletics. And while our players certainly perform at Beaver Stadium, they've been performing at the next level as well. Let's take a look at our NFL highlights from this past week. The Eagles are now 7-0. Miles Sanders capped a blowout with an 11-yard touchdown run, a part of his 78-yard performance on just nine carries against the Steelers. Saquon Barkley with his fifth touchdown of the season, 53 yards on the ground, three receptions in total for Saquon Barkley, including the spectacular run against the Seahawks. This 44-yard catch was one of six receptions for 75 yards for Buccaneers wide receiver Chris Godwin on Thursday night. And finally, Cowboys linebacker Micah Parsons with the scoop and score for his first NFL touchdown. Quarterback Justin Fields jumps over Parsons, then he picks his way through the offense going into the end zone. Parsons. 
to pay dirt for the Cowboys on Sunday. So that's a look at our Penn Staters in the NFL, as now we take a look at our Penn State Student Athletes of the Week presented by MI Windows and Doors from the Big Ten champion Penn State field hockey team on assignment. The graduate students had a terrific year. Penn State, the Big Ten regular season champions, and Liam Soulier from the Penn State men's hockey team. 63 saves, just one goal against in a sweep of Wisconsin on the road and his first career collegiate shutout. So those are our Penn State Student Athletes of the Week presented by MI Windows and Doors. As I said, the Penn State field hockey team, the Big Ten regular season champions, co-sharing that championship with Maryland. There's a great look at the team, and they are off to the Big Ten tournament. Big Ten tournaments for women's soccer, men's soccer, and field hockey getting underway. Field hockey, the number one seed in that tournament. They have a bye in the opening round. They're coming up on Friday. As we look at our rankings, Penn State Athletics loaded this week. Wrestling, one. Field hockey, three. Men's and women's fencing right now. What a great fall sports season. We're transitioning over to the winter sports. Basketball is going to kick off. Women's hockey, number 11. Men's hockey, number 13. We'll be joined by Tyler Gratton from the men's hockey team in just a moment. Women's volleyball, 15. Football, 16. The list goes on and on. Great work by all of our Penn State student athletes and coaches. Women's soccer at number 21 as well. And of course, that Penn State field hockey team, the 2022 Big Ten regular season champions. Penn State men's hockey with a big series coming up against Michigan this weekend at Pagula on the road to open up Big Ten play. Let's roll the highlights. Penn State comes from behind in the opening game at Wisconsin. Tyler Paquette from a sharp angle there. Penn State takes a 2-1 lead. They hang on for a narrow 2-1 victory in game one. Game two going for the sweep on the road in Madison. Connor McMenamin circles behind the net picks a spot top shelf. McMenamin gives Penn State the lead in game two. Penn State has scored first in seven of their eight games this season. Nittany Lions hold that one nothing lead going into the third period on the power play. Needing a power play goal, Ashton Calder delivers from the slot. Calder gives Penn State a 2-0 lead. 2-0 Penn State trying to add more on. On the road in Wisconsin. Scramble in the net mouth. Xander Lampa driving the goal. Chips away at it. He puts the puck in the back of the net. Then Connor McEachern with the empty netter for some insurance. Penn State a 4-0 win. Penn State sweeps Wisconsin and with that 4-0 win it's the first career shutout for Liam Soulier who was terrific in goal. Look at highlights here from both games from Soulier. He makes 63 saves on 64 shots and Penn State sweeps Wisconsin to open up Big Ten play. They'll host Michigan, the top ranked team in the country at Pagula Ice Arena coming up on Friday and Saturday. We're joined now by Tyler Gratton, senior forward from the Penn State men's hockey team here on our Unrivaled Weekly Preview Show. And we just talked about Liam Soulier there. He's got to be a fun goaltender to play in front of right now. What's really impressed you about his play this season? Uh, I think it's his worth it work ethic. Um, he shows up every single day, ready to work, always has a positive attitude, and it's contagious throughout the locker room. I mean, um, practices, games, you guys feed off of it. I know you're a process-driven team, an objective-driven, but an 8-0 start is a great achievement to start the year. What do you like about the way your team's playing right now? Uh, I think we're clicking. I mean, uh, obviously, we're offensively scoring a lot of goals. Um, we're shooting the puck a lot. Um, I think it's really helping our team through this early start in the season. And I think if we can continue to build off of that, we're going to have a really successful run here. And it's coming from all four lines, your line in particular, with Danny Geniev and Ben Schoen. What do you like about the chemistry you three have right now? Uh, I think we're just finding each other out in the ice a lot. Um, we're supporting each other. Uh, we're working really well together. We're just kind of clicking in the ozone. Um, our big emphasis is uh, making sure we have two guys on the puck to be able to support each other and have easy outlets. Taking a look at your goals from this season there on the rebound on the shot by Carter Shade. It's got to be so much fun to score at Pagula. Oh, yeah. Uh, the atmosphere is amazing. Uh, I mean, we've, I would like to argue that we have the best student section inside the entire country. So um, any time that we get to play in front of them is awesome. Well, I always hear Coach Kodowski talk about you as a big identity guy. What do you feel like that identity is that you help bring to the team? Uh, I think I'm a strong power forward, physical presence out in the ice. Um, like to get into the dirty area, especially in the net front. So a big part of our team play is a win in the net fronts. And I think uh, offensively and defensively, I contribute to that. Well, you just talked about the crowd. What can the crowd mean this weekend with a huge home series? The Big Ten home opening series happens to be against Michigan, one of many top ranked teams that you'll face this year. But they, in fact, are number one this week. Uh, I mean, uh, hopefully we have a, a packed out Pagula because that always helps us off. Um, 
I mean, the noise, the energy that they bring, we really feed off of it. I know the guys love playing there, playing in front of them. So hopefully we can get as many people inside the building as we can this weekend. What has it been like playing with your brother? The first time, right, that you've ever played with your brother in your career? Yes, first time we've ever uh, been on the same team together. Obviously, we've done, like, practices and scrimmages throughout the summer and whatnot, but this is the first, like, organized team that we've played for. Um, and it, it's definitely a special thing, um, getting to skate out in the ice with them and practice with them and battle against them every single day. Um, I'm sure my parents are probably loving it, <laughs> getting to come to the one rink and watch two of their own kids uh, out in the ice. Um, so, yeah, it, it's really special, and it'll definitely be a really special moment for us moving forward throughout our lives that I'm sure we'll look back on and remember forever. For football fans watching, younger brother Dylan Gratton, a freshman defenseman this year on the Penn State hockey team, did you guys talk about that growing up at all, dreaming of playing, you know, whether it's collegiately, pro, some point together? Uh, not really. I mean, I don't think it really hit either of us until um, he committed here. And then, like, we started putting the numbers together and trying to figure out the timeline of, like, when I was going in, when I would be leaving, and then when he was going in, like, it finally ended up happening. And I was like, wow, like, we're actually going to do this thing. This is awesome. A coach said that sometimes at practice he feels like you're a little tougher and more physical on him than everyone else. <laughs> is that a true statement? Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe. I mean, if I see my brother in the corner, I mean, growing up, always like to, you know, give him a little extra last shove. So it definitely kind of translates over. Well, Tyler, guess. you're off to a great start this season. Good luck this weekend against Michigan, and thanks so much for joining us here tonight. Thank you, Trip. Tyler Appreciate Gratton you. joining us here on the Unrivaled Weekly Preview Show. If you want to talk some more hockey, you can listen to the Penn State Coach show tomorrow featuring James Franklin, but men's hockey head coach Guy Godowski will be on tap first. It's hosted by the field Burger and Tap. That's the Penn State Coaches Show presented by Pepsi with football head coach James Franklin tomorrow and special guest men's hockey head coach Guy Godowski as the unbeaten Nittany Lions welcome Michigan to town Friday at 8 o'clock on Big Ten Network and 7.30 on Saturday on Big Ten Plus, which is where you can see so many great Penn State sporting events coming up this weekend on Big Ten plus Mercyhurst against Penn State, the 11th ranked Penn State women's hockey team. It's a hockey doubleheader at Pagula Ice Arena this weekend, Friday at three and Saturday at one o'clock. That's on Big Ten plus swimming and diving West Virginia against Penn State Friday at five Saturday at 11 and then men's soccer Penn State at Indiana in that Big Ten men's soccer quarterfinal. As we said, all the Big Ten soccer tournaments and field hockey tournaments are underway. So obviously we're looking forward to traveling to Bloomington this weekend, fans. Make sure you practice Happy Valley hospitality and show that Penn State pride. Show why Penn State fans are the absolute best, whether we're at home or on the road. Be respectful, be great fans, be responsible and be gracious hosts. So a busy night here at the Lash Building with our great unrivaled weekly preview show. Also a busy night across campus over at Rec Call as we are moments away, I believe, from first serve as Penn State welcomes Maryland in a Big Ten volleyball match. Madison Miller is there. Madison, I'm sure it's a tremendous environment over there as they get ready to start that match tonight. Thanks, Brian. The atmosphere is so great. The fans are here. The student section is filled and the bands here. I feel like the bands have such a huge impact on this team as they are 10 and 2 at Rec Hall. Tonight they're facing Maryland and the first time that they ever faced Maryland was in 1976. Penn State has not lost one game to them since 1979. They have 28 wins from last time. Two weeks ago, Penn State faced Maryland and they won 3-2-1. Maryland is currently 4-8 in the Big Ten while Penn State is 6-6. Six and six. And a player I'm looking out for tonight is Katie Clark. Last game, she had 10 hits and a hitting percentage of 412. Well, Maddie, I can't wait to watch that match tonight. It's on Big Ten Network. I'm going to pack this set up. I'm going to go home and watch that. Great stuff, as always, from Rec Hall. I can hear the crowd. They're roaring. They're ready. It sounds like first serve is just a couple of moments away. Thanks, Madison. Really appreciate it, as always. So Madison Miller checking in from Rec Hall tonight, live on our Unrivaled Weekly Preview Show. Let's throw up that Big Ten Plus schedule once one more time. Again, great Penn State action on Big Ten Plus and, of course, women's volleyball coming up tonight on the Big Ten Network. Fans, after the game on Saturday from Bloomington, we'll be with you live for the unrivaled post-game show. Get immediate reaction from head coach James Franklin and student-athletes following the game live right here on these same outlets where you're tuned in tonight. So it's Penn State visiting Indiana to kick off the month of November as Big Ten play continues. Four games left. Penn State tries to go 1-0 this week on the road in Bloomington.
Bloomington. Thanks to Bryce Effner and Keaton Ellis from the Penn State football team for joining me tonight, and Tyler Gratton from the Penn State men's hockey team. Great work, as always, by Ross Woomer producing our show. And thank you all so much for tuning in to Head Coach James Franklin's weekly media availability and our unrivaled weekly preview show. We'll talk to you after the game on Saturday from Bloomington. I'm Brian Tripp saying so long from the Lash Building on what is just a gorgeous, gorgeous early November night. Take care, everyone.